I have my mobile pack on me and I'm about to head out into the streets of New York. I was going to bring that. No. Okay. It's always a challenge leaving home. So many things to organize. This is my setup. One of the Holy Land solid comms. I've also got a Sennheiser G4 just as a comparison. I got my backpack on here. Coming out on the street. I'm just being a real nerd with this around my chest. Walking down the street as though I'm listening to music in one ear or something. It's not a good look. People in pubs. It is nice to see New Yorkers getting back out and on the street and things coming back to life. You gotta walk fast in New York City. Alright, see if I can cross here. Oh man, I'm one of those people walking around just doing the thing. Doing the vlog thing. Alright, see if I can find them. Hey guys. Hello. I know. What's that scared face for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're looking so scared. My girlfriend's looking at me like, who am I with? You know what the best thing is though? I brought headsets for all of us. You can't even hear me, can you? I was saying it's so loud. I mean, that's, that's what it's for. It's for socializing, right? Are you ready, Danny? This is for you. You have eight of these! I have eight of these, yeah. That is so cool! <laughs> yep, got this place. Oh here. We can wear them, city biking around New York, host so many concerts. People on the door, side stage, green room, looking after the talent, people on lights. We can have people on sound. Danny's starting a whole new show here. She's just like, I got a comms unit, now I'm just gonna start something. <laughs> She's back! Are you gonna put on headphones? No? What about these little ones? Is that loud? Do you want to turn it down and stay on the side? Do you want me to stop? Do you want to just like get a drink and like be normal people? Yeah, thanks Juliana for the introduction. Hi everyone, my name is David. I'm a director based out of New York City. I'm originally from Australia, hence the accent. So a couple of weeks ago, I was on Clubhouse with my friend Juliana. She is a great travel producer and presenter. Um, I also do photography, I'm a photojournalist. She introduced me to the group of people as having a tech channel. Yeah, it's funny that you introduced me like that because um, that was never actually my goal in, in setting out to do that YouTube channel. I was thinking more of like short creative pieces and short films and music videos and that kind of stuff. But it seems recently I've been doing a bunch of tech stuff. And then during the call, I literally saw a message on Instagram who said, Hi David, I am Summer from Holy Land Tech. We produce wireless devices for video, camera, audio, and live stream, etc. They have a, a new um, intercom system called Solidcom M1. Are you interested in checking it out? And I was like, um, yeah. Two of the things missing from my ATEM rig are an intercom system and a tally. So this was one of those perfect opportunities where I was like, I would definitely love to check this out. Intercom has always been something that I've hired for an event. But one of the things I really like about owning gear is that you can get to learn it back to front and also it takes out that time when you have that pressure the day before a shoot. We have to go rent a whole bunch of gear and then test it out and make sure if it's working or not and if you're missing any parts. Downside is you have to buy it and you have to maintain it and you have to store it somewhere. But I don't mind that because the upside is that I just feel a lot more confident with my gear. It's heavy. Oh, I'm a very bad judge of that. You're just a strong man though, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's sizable. Polyland's new intercom system, the Solidcom M1. The thought of carrying one box was intimidating. All right, well, this one's definitely lighter. Nice. So we've got two antennas, battery plate, power cable, lanyards, pin, the unit itself, eight of these belt packs, POE out, European, and... Nope, they've sent me some European plugs, so that could be a challenge. I just had to run up to my office. Everyone needs a box of old cables that you hardly ever get into until such time as this, 45 minutes later. Hopefully when you get yours, you will get the right power adapter for you. In the other case, we've got headphones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pin limo. Microphones go either side. Either wearing it on your left side, switch it around to the right side. Padding feels nice. Good cable, not too long. 
I don't entirely love this layer. A little bit of dead space. This section here has just padding under here. It would be really nice if this whole thing could stack. Then you can just pull it out when you get to set or even just like leave the recharging station in the case. I may end up like cutting this case. A standard four pin XLR in the back. This all lights up. All the little baby batteries. Very small, very light. If it is fully charged, there'll be four dots along the top. That's a really nice base station. That is solid. There's a bit of gunk there. I'm guessing that's gunk from the side of the case. That'll come off. Yeah, this is just a really nice base station. It's got, it's very compact. I like things that are compact. That's what I like. I like things that are easy to store and to move around. And that base station is looking good. The next one is the unit itself. So along the bottom are all the connections. Power in, which is a ethernet cable. Four wire and two wire to connect to other intercom systems. And then it's got a PoE LAN out, which means you can attach another ethernet cable to go out of this unit and into a second unit. And then on top, we've got the two, the two antennas, which my God, they're big. They are large, which is great. Let's get this plugged in just to keep things tidy on this desk. I'm not actually gonna use the cable that was supplied. I'll, I'll plug it in though to show you because this is actually very easy to get in and out, which is nice because not all ethernet cables are as easy. I like the cable, that is good. But for now, I'm just gonna plug one of my own ethernet cables in there. And then in the PoE injector, so I've got data in and then power and data out. Plug that one in like so. Oh, there we go. Flashing red button. I assume that is good. All right, let's power it up. Blue, off and away it goes for a better view. It's like clip art. I think they need to change the font. It needs to be like all caps and just straightforward. A solid com needs like some solid font, like this font. I should have timed this. All right, we're not gonna time it, but we're gonna do like you're sitting here watching me, still thinking. In the meantime, I will turn on, oh, there we go. All right, maybe 30 seconds. And then I just turned on this unit and it has popped up already. Let's grab another unit as well. Power is on the side here, just flick that on. And link. Okay, so that's really fast. These units, you turn them on and within a couple of seconds, they have found each other. They have already paired, very easy out of the box to use. I have plugged the headphone output of number six into my audio recorder. And we're gonna test the quality of the audio as we go through this tutorial. Put the headphones on. This is quite nice. It's a rubber end on it that has a fair amount of tension, but act as a shock mount as well. One of the reasons that this system is more expensive than the previous model is that the audio quality is much better. So I'm gonna test this out later and have a listen back to it. Um, but it does sound, sounds good to me on the air. Uh, it feels comfortable. They don't actually make a two set headset at this point in time, I've been told. Um, although I quite like having a second ear on the headset sometimes, but it's pretty standard in terms of having one ear open, be able to hear around. Let's start by going through the belt pack and then I'll move on to the base station. Working our way around this unit. It's got volume up and down. It's got a power button that gets slid. Got antennas that can be screwed off. They're nice and solid antennas. There's a mute mode and a talk mode. There's a battery monitor on top. Around the other side, battery pack. A USB port to pair it. Battery contacts on the bottom to charge while it's in the dock. And then there's an eight pin limo. Slides right on, comes off, and when it's on, can't pull off. There's a headset port here. It's a TRRS. I can get a solid headphone line out, but I can't get the headphones on another unit. So for example, you could actually just use any old pair of headsets. i plug this one in here. Wow, I'm just hearing myself all around now. That's a very lightweight way to go to a shoot. If this unit on a battery, a little headset. The problem I've had is that when I turn on the talk button, I get this tone that comes through. This is because most Apple or Samsung headphones are wired tip, ring, ring, sleeve, with left, right, ground, microphone. But the SolidCom has Chinese wiring which reverses the ground and the microphone. This is probably my main gripe with the product as carrying a crossover dongle is going to be a pain. To get into the menu, press and hold the B button. There's the option to pair it. You can change your side tone. That's good just being self-aware that you're on and you're communicating people if you forget to untoggle this talk button. All right, next one is language, Chinese or English, reset, and then info. 
and exit. So there's really not much to do on this belt pack. Rather than being mounted like this on your belt, the pack is going to be mounted on your side like that. I think that's quite a good design. It means that the cable's coming out the back and it's probably easier in terms of where your hand is to reach down. And then other than the belt clip is a little place for a lanyard. You know when you're like trying to thread a needle and then it comes back out? Oh, there we go. Thread that one back through itself. Hopefully this doesn't affect my lapel microphone here. Probably jangles around a bit, but if you don't, like if you're wearing a dress or something like that and you don't actually have a belt pocket, then that's a great way to just be able to dangle that one around your neck. I'm just gonna keep this headset on as we go so we can flick between different audio sources. The build feels really solid. Like it just, it feels really, really good throw it around. I feel like I've been saying solid a lot and there must have been a group of people sitting around a marketing table being like, what can we call this device? So let's take a look at the unit itself. It's made to be portable. I like this design. I'm not really a, a rack unit kind of guy because I'm always sort of coming and going from events and often working in sort of smaller crews. So I need something that's portable and I can move around. So I think this is going to be ideal for that. It does have the two NPF battery slots on the back. I could actually just power it off one of, one of these little units. Let me see if I can disconnect it. Yep. All right, so that's pretty cool because that makes it mobile. It means like I can not even bring this case, but I could put this one into my Pelican and then I could really just take two headsets and this if I'm just trying to at a very bare minimum talk between me and one other crew person and because I don't even need the antennas. All right, I'm gonna plug this one in just to be on the safe side. Don't see any change there. It doesn't seem to matter either way. Take that one off, it's still powered. There's two battery plates, so you can obviously hot swap that and the power as well doesn't miss a beat. Part of me would have preferred a V-mount battery on that just because I, I quite like that and I feel like that lasts a long time. But NPF is very widely used. Uh, it's very easy to come by. One thing I'm really liking about this unit is the design of this battery plate. It's very flush with the unit. I have some devices like, like this wireless video transmitter, which even though it's, it's very small, th the battery plate is basically the same depth as the unit itself. So sometimes these battery plates can take up a lot of space and for a unit like this a lot of the time want to plug it into mains and so that's where like not having to worry about a battery plate sticking out keeps it nice low profile it's going to sit into a case very well so let's take this unit out into the field and we'll see how it performs i got three tests i want to try how far this can transmit on its own without the antennas so that was meant to be 1300 feet forward and 160 feet behind the next test is with the antennas on how far is the range and is the quality improved we're meant to get 984 feet in a 360 degree rotation so the other test that i want to do is to see how this performs in a backpack so what i'm going to do is just get one of these npf batteries slide that on and now i can actually disconnect the ethernet power and it's still on and then i've got a peak design bag here put the whole polyland solid com one in there and then i could load that up as a backpack i'm not expecting you would get like a massive range but maybe you would get like 100 meters or something and that could be really useful for some sort of mobile units where you just need that on your back and you're maybe a documentary shooter that could be a really interesting way of using this and then also these uh, headphones that look very domestic where you just want to be lower profile and not cause attention to yourself so let's take this unit out into the field and we'll see how it performs i'm in new york city so i'm going to count this in city blocks this is not going to be an exact measurement so to start off with this test i've put this into my bag and i'm not actually putting it facing me at all this is sort of on a 90 degree axis and um, the sound is fine we'll see how far down the street we can get we've got the new york city tactics here and i'm a, about a block away a block and a half i think and um, i feel like it's maybe starting to drop out a bit we'll just go to the end of this block you know, good block all right, and I'm now about one and a half block from my apartment, and this and it seems like it's reconnected. It's a good solid city block with a lot of interference that it's still good for. Us. So it's not bad for something that's just like in a bag and has turned at 90 degrees. So it's actually facing the way that it should be, and it's got no antennas. 
Take two. So this time we have it positioned up on a stand so that rather than being in a bag and being off axis, we're gonna put this onto axis, but the first test we'll try is one where we don't actually have the antenna on top of the unit. Come back here to the taxis where last time it was starting to break up. It seems nice and clear and it's continuing. I'm now two blocks from the receiver and it still sounds nice and clear, which is great. I feel like it's starting to drop a little bit, maybe. Three blocks, line of sight. With this setup, I've actually got the, the window is still closed, so it's going through glass. I'm on three blocks now. Maybe getting some interference. So now what we have to do is go back, put the antennas on, and then see how far we should be able to get, because with line of sight, we should be able to get up to 984 feet. It's a very hot summer day, probably further than I want to walk. What I have noticed is that there's no breakup as long as I'm within the range that I've specified there. So that's nice. I'm not getting like noise and cracklingness and that kind of stuff. Hello, what are you guys up to? Eleanor had told us in New Zealand that people just in your neighborhood, they just pop in. And yeah. So we're like, this will be very Kiwi of us. So, so we could I've, just go up there and just surprise We could. Her. We didn't yeah. even have to buzz. I like your pants. Hey, well, you know, unexpected. Honey? Oh, hello. <laughs> what? Oh, that's not like David. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? I don't feel like she's going to think it's an intruder. How was your movie club? It was so good. I just wrapped up. You ladies hang out. Have a good time. I'm going to borrow your man. So I've roped him in. I've been like, here's a headset. And rather than me going and uh, talking to myself through this comms unit, and then back and listening to it in a different unit. I'm just like, hey Phil, we here's the unit. You tell me if you can hear me, which is, which is really the point of the whole unit. Sounds good. Sounds clear. Sounds clear. Feels good. How's the audio quality, mate? It sounds good. Very HD. Very HD. Actually, I don't even want to take it back. It's very standard. Very standard. It's a belt pack, so it actually goes sideways. Hey, there we go. It's breaking up a little bit at this point. It's breaking up. Yeah, I can hear you. I can see you. It's broken up at this point. Can you hear me clearly? I can hear you clearly. I'm just maybe not like this. At this point, you sound robotic. I can't. I can't make out a full sentence. No. Oh, you're saying because I'm right behind you. Mouth moving to get here. It's very broken up. Four blocks. Solid. Solid. I would say if we're getting to about three to five blocks, it sort of drops out. From what I'm seeing. Why don't we try to see what happens when we go around an entire building? Great. You know what? Check it out. Yeah, around the corner and then nothing. Completely dead. Even though we should be within range. Two different materials turned off. Device is disconnected. Turned off. It's lost. Did you hear that lady yeah. voice? You think it'll just pick it back up? As soon as we're close enough, it'll come back. All right, so we're, we're coming back around the corner from Park. Oh, look at that. Boom. Is it back? Mine's not on yet. Isn't it? Oh, okay. uh, what have you got? I've got talk. Lost. You're still lost? Yeah. That was, it was, it was funny, funny because, because I, I, I just walked around the corner of the building. There and, I am, I'm back. Ah, here we go. We can hear each other. We're on. Ah, okay, so. It really does need to be line of sight. There's still a lot of stuff going on here. Like we got trees and traffic and bodies. Bodies and cars and probably a lot of Wi-Fi units, I'm guessing. Oh yeah. Like New York City, there's like gotta be like thousands. But I would say the um, the audio quality is better than a phone. Do you think? Or not? I think it's about a phone. That exact same level. Totally clear, not annoying. Well, thanks for uh, participating in my little road test. <laughs> Any time. All right, so that's my review of the Hollyland SolidCom M1. I really like this unit. I think this is going to be really fantastic to bring onto all of my productions. I like that it scales up. I can have eight different people on this uh, for multi-camera productions and then for smaller field units, I could really break this down and just fit this into a bag and not have to worry about plugging in mains and all that kind of stuff. So this unit is going to be fantastic for a whole range of productions. The SolidCom M1 is available now for 4,300 for a four belt pack unit or $7,000 for an eight pack unit. And there are links in the description below. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments below and stick around because in the next video, I'll go into greater depth about the network settings available to control the SolidCom M1.